Hello and welcome back to The Note. Well, today was a day many of us here in New York thought we'd never live to see. We've seen a new all-time high in the Nasdaq Composite Index. It's the first time we've had one of those in 15 years. It's altogether remarkable and I'll try to put it in some perspective for you. Now, first of all, this really is a very fast recovery from what was one of the biggest bubbles of all time. What we're showing you here is how uh, the two other great bubbles in history uh, fared. After uh, the uh, Wall Street crash in 1929, it was until 1954 before the Indo Industrials got back uh, above their uh, previous peak. In the case of the Japanese bubble that peaked on New Year's Eve 1989, well, uh, we're still almost 50% below that level on the Nikkei 225. Completely understandable when you have an excess of speculation. It generally takes a generation to work out. In the case of the NASDAQ, it's been done in 15 years. That's really very fast. Why has that happened? Primarily, I'm pleased to say, because there's been some genuinely impressive corporate performance, led, of course, by Apple. This is what Apple has done since the NASDAQ hit uh, its previous high. Compared to the NASDAQ itself, you can see you can barely even see that the NASDAQ has done anything at all. Apple at this point still appears to be cheap by most metrics. Back in 2000, it was still a year away from uh, launching the iPod. A lot of this gain is due to the extraordinary story of Apple. There are also obviously a number of other companies that have uh, registered very impressive gains in revenues and profits such as Google, which wasn't even quoted then, and Facebook, which didn't even exist. Now, how does that mean that the NASDAQ was actually a decent investment back in March 2000? Absolutely not. This is how the uh, NASDAQ has done compared to a few other indexes. It's very difficult to find anything anywhere around the world that has actually done worse. Uh, even the S&P Financials Index which of course had the great credit crisis during the middle of this period, has beaten the NASDAQ. Even the S&P Industrials Index has beaten it really comfortably, as you can see. Uh, American manufacturing appeared to be almost dead back in 2000. And then Argentina's Merval Index has done far better. Argentina, we know, is in all kinds of trouble these days. It's had a devaluation and default crisis since then. More broadly, quite apart from Apple, there are four other companies that have multiplied tenfold uh, on the US stock exchange since uh, uh, the uh, NASDAQ hit its previous high. They include companies that make jeans and cans and run a railroad. All of them seemed to be industries in terminal decline back then. The moral, there is money to be made by those who have the guts to be contrarian. You should have been investing in industries that appeared to be dead and buried and were priced accordingly 15 years ago. And even if you would by now have retrieved your money, you certainly shouldn't have been touching the red hot stocks of the Nasdaq.